In this video, I'd like to you look at getting an array of objects in, in JavaScript, but using the JSON notation. The code for this uh, page can be found at the URL scene. So here's what the page looks like. Let me uh, open it in Live Server again. So this is what the page looks like. Uh, there is some information about various dogs and the information is arranged in collected into objects and then there's a drop down with the name of the dog or the dog breed and then sort of some information about each dog breed so those will our objects will be about dog breeds and there will be an array of them and they'll be displayed in this uh, grid okay so the style is mostly uh, about the grid Wrapper is the div that contains the other divs and uh, serves as the 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 wrapper for the grid. For the grid, it's setting up here. Then it has three columns, and the first one is a bit smaller. And that there's a little bit of gap, just a one pixel gap. Uh, box is the class shared by all of the inner divs and rounded corners and so on, paddings. And then the A, B, and C are determining where they're located. Um, in this one, this is the image and it is spanning several rows as we saw. So this is sort of overkill in that the normal layout of the divs, they would sort of, for the most part, take their position. This is the one that we really have to work on because of the spanning. Okay, so that's the style. Now we're over in the HTML and I just have the JavaScript in the HTML. So we just have these uh, two files to, to look at. Um, the title, link to the style sheet, header here is the HTML for that grid we saw. So mostly just the container div that I called wrapper or gave it the wrapper class and then the individual divs. Here's a drop down select with no elements. Here is an image with no source. Uh, here is a place to put the height, a span for the height, a span for the group, a span for the colors, a span for the description, all empty. And that will be filled in dynamically as the user chooses a dog. And here is our script. This is a little bit overkill. It's usually assumed that the language is JavaScript and the type is text JavaScript. Um, so that's a again a little old fashioned and overkill. Um, we're adding a listener, uh, a change listener to the drop down. We have an array. So at first it starts off an empty array. And there is a notation in JavaScript, in JavaScript object notation in JSON. There is a notation for arrays. And we will certainly see that in, in other videos. But in here, I am just using. Uh, the simplest amount, the sort of a, a sort of small amount of JavaScript object notation, just for the individual objects. So I'm not using. I'm using the normal declaration of an array, and then I am sort of using the notation as I set up each element. Um, there is a sort of more extensive notation that I could have the array with within the JSON notation but another time. So within this notation, so this is a, a single object I'm defining here using JSON and it the curly bracket is denoting or delimiting the object. So the, the beginning curly bracket, the end of the curly bracket, everything between the curly bracket is defining an object in this notation. The object is mainly just about uh, data. So it's not, uh, we're not really having uh, any methods in these objects. Um, and there is a, the name of a property or a key or a property or an attribute or a key, whatever you want to call it, uh, separated 
by a colon and then the value. So we have these key value pairs and then the key value pairs are separated from other key value pairs uh, from with commas. And then just make sure you don't put a comma after the last one because that would indicate there's more to come. And if there's not more to come, it would uh, confuse the notation. So that's our JSON notation for an object. Curly brackets denoting the object. Uh, colon between the name of a property and the value of a property, and then key value uh, key value pairs separated by commas. And then I've just made an array of these objects. So I have, uh, this is sort of cumbersome and, and we will do better uh, at a later date, but uh, my dog, uh, the first dog, my dog zero is a bulldog. My dog one is a Lhasa Apsa and so on. Okay, grab the select from the page, loop over the array of objects. Uh, sorry, yes, loop over the array of object, dog objects, uh, create an, uh, a new option, I set the text of the option to be the name of the dog breed, set the value to be the, the index. So I'm using a for each, and EL will be the element of the array, which is, an, which is a dog object. And I is my, my sort of index or counter starting at zero. And so I make a new option. I set its text to be the name of the dog, its value to be my index, and I add the option to the select. I have a method a function that is handling the change method, the change event of the select. So when I choose, when the user chooses a dog, I'm getting going to the page, getting going to the select, grabbing its value, which was an index. And then I can say my dog, which is an array of objects, index, which is a particular object, and then use the properties like dog group. Um, and so that's what I was doing originally. And then I commented that out. And then I said, um, and so I had a lot of repeated of my dog, my index, my dog, my index. So I just got user dog is my dog, my index, and then just said user dog. Don't know that that's necessarily any better, but um, maybe it looks a little nicer, a little more succinct. So that is the method that is uh, handling uh, the user choosing a dog. Um, this is me using uh, math library, the, the random number, which is between zero and one, multiply it by the length of the dog, my dog array. And so then that's a number between, let's say there are 10 dogs, that'll be a number between zero and 10. Then we're taking the floor of that. So that will be an integer uh, between zero and nine inclusive, but it won't get to 10. And then I'm setting the value of the select equal to that random number. And then I'm, Picking a change event and dispatching uh, an event to the my select. So I'm making it as though the user chose a random dog at the beginning. So each time the page starts, that code at the end uh, picks for me a random dog. But then I, as a user, I can come in and choose the dog I want. So that's what I wanted to show you. Mainly, I wanted to start bringing in this idea of JSON. So curly brackets for object, uh, property name and property uh, value or key value, and key value pair separated by uh, the, the key and the value separated by a colon, and then the key value pair separated by a comma. That all made an object. And then I sort of, sort of by hand made a uh, bunch of objects that were the elements of an array. But we will another time uh, incorporate the array aspect into the JSON notation. Okay, that's what I wanted to show you on this one. Thanks much for your attention.